Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here, you can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets or you can subscribe to the channel, click that notifications button and get a new notification whenever a new video is uploaded. We've just seen your Dennis Ugas against Manny Pacquiao, I thought it was a terrific fight, very intriguing, you know, it was like a chess match. Um, I had them sort of nip and tuck early in the fight and towards the end of the fight I thought Ugas began to pull away. I personally had it 7-5 or 8-4 to Ugas. I did think there were some swing rounds in there. But ultimately, the right man got the job done, I believe. I think Manny Pacquiao was accepting of that too. He did speak about there being some tight legs there. And that's something you'd expect from a 42-year-old. And you know, you have to say, the achievement of even being able to compete at this level at his age. Because make no mistake, Ugas is a problem. He's going to be a problem for all the top guys in this division. Trust me on that. He's already been a massive problem for Sean Porter. Many people felt that he won that fight and wasn't given a decision. Believe me, Errol Spence is going to know he's been in a fight. Terence Crawford, if that's the route he ends up going down, will know he's been in a fight. It looks like the PBC will, of course, push the, the Errol Spence fight. Believe me, he's a problem for anyone in this division. I'm not saying he necessarily beats them all, but he's a problem. And at 42 years old, to be able to compete at this level in the way that he did... It really was tremendous for Manny Pacquiao. I did feel that he wasn't rotating enough to the right-hand side at his own right to evade that backhand from Ugas, which I thought was terrific to the body. He found a lot of success with it. But it all came off of the jab. The jab was a major problem for Manny Pacquiao to overcome. And we did speak about in the preview video how he'll look to, to use the jab to the body. And early on, he was using it to the body very, very well. He then began to target the head a little bit more. But what that meant is that it provided a, a, an inconsistency in the pattern. So it was harder for Pacquiao to read the jab to the body when it was coming. So he was always offset with that jab. Uh, and I did want to see Manny, particularly as Ugas began to use it a little bit more inconsistently as in the middle rounds, I did want to see Ma uh, Manny sort of rotate to his own right away from that right hand, take away that jab, and then from there, as you're rotating, trying to get him to reset, jump in from there. Or get on the back foot and try and force Ugas to come to you. Try and lure him in. We know, as we said in the preview, he is a responsive fighter. He's a counter puncher. Take that away from him. Make him be the one to pressure you. We didn't really see that, but Based on what Manny said post-fight, he felt that his legs were just too tight and he couldn't move. Um, and I can't remember her name, but Caleb's pl Caleb Plant's um, uh, wife, who Mrs. Plant, we'll call her, <laughs> can't go wrong with Mrs. Plant, right? Mrs. Plant was uh, interviewing Manny post-fight and she was basically saying, you know, she mentioned his age and he looked a little bit uncomfortable at that point. You know, he didn't really want to say it was down to his age. No one wants to admit it. But as I've said a million times in the past, the only undefeated fighter in boxing is Father Time. And I believe that's what we saw there. Um, we also spoke in the preview video about how Manny Pacquiao, when he de develops that forward momentum and he's coming in quickly, he wants to force you back. And a lot of fighters are forced back because of the heavy hand handedness and suddenness of, of Manny in those attacks, particularly when he's sort of coming off at different angles. It forces a guy to go back. But we said that with Ugas, he'll take a step back with that first phase, on that first phase of attack, then hold his feet and punch with Manny. And he did that. And he did very well at that. And I did say that was a key sort of area of battle. I thought, though, that Manny would get the better of that. I thought that he would have more success than he did. Maybe it was an issue with the legs. Maybe Ugas is just very, very good at what he does. He's a very smooth operator. He's very, very composed. And uh, he's going to use a lot of that against some of these other guys, you know. Uh, he's going to be a problem for anyone in the division. In terms of Manny Pacquiao himself, where does he go from here? You know, personally, I think, look, he's 42 years old. He's not going to sit there and have another run at the title, surely. So what I'd love to see Manny do is have one more fight in the Philippines against his, uh, in front of his adoring fans. It could be, you know, a tomato can he's fighting. It doesn't matter. A punch bag. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be uh, a big sort of named opponent. Robert Guerrero got a win tonight, you know. I'm sure Robert Guerrero would love the money of a Pac-Man fight. Um, and Robert Guerrero is not the fighter he used to be, that's for sure. Maybe you can have that fight. That's a, a big name to finish your career off, say, at home in the Philippines. That might be the route to go. But yeah, I, I think it would be sad for him to walk away from the sport when he's clearly not washed up. You know, as, as like I said, as Adam Smith said at the end, there will never be another Manny Pacquiao. At 42 years old to be able to hang with these guys the way he did. You know, there's a weightlifter, a Greek weightlifter, who's considered one of the best of all time. His name's Pyrrhos Dimas. And uh, Dimas was a four-medal 
champ, essentially. Three gold medals at the Olympic Games and one bronze medal at the Olympic Games. And a lot of people always talk about the gold medals. You know, he's one of the best of all time. Look at the things he's done. To me, personally, although obviously the golds are incredible and that's what creates the legend that is Dimas, the greatest achievement in some respects was the bronze medal. It was in his home nation of the of Athens. It was Greece, the Athens Olympics. And he had a massive injury to his ankle and his wrist moving into the tournament. And he wasn't. his doctors advised him not to partake. He could exacerbate the injury. It could become really bad. Don't go down that route. Do not take this fight. You know, this fight, this challenge. Just leave it, basically. Walk away from the sport. And he decided he was going to partake. And he managed to qualify for the Olympics. And people were saying, wow, what an achievement. He's managed to qualify. He goes there. Think about what we're talking about. The level of weight that they're loading onto their their wrists and their ankle, right? The joints of the body. And he managed to get a bronze medal. And the entire sort of arena was on his feet, giving him a standing ovation for like 10 minutes. And he's sitting there in eyes filled up. You know, the, the gold medalist wasn't the star of the show that day. It was him. So although he had achieved greater heights in the past, the fact that at his age, with those injuries, he was even able to hang with the other top athletes in the world showed his level. And in a way, that's how I see Manny Pacquiao, 42 years old, to hang with a guy who's capable of operating at that level. It's absolutely incredible. You also have to give a massive shout out to Ugas and give him a lot of respect because of the composure. He wasn't overwhelmed. You know, there, there were a lot of us that were thinking, you know what, wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get the decision here. You know, he's up against a very popular fighter who's the A-side, clearly. It might not go his way. It didn't go his way against Sean Porter. The Spence fight would make more money for the PBC, you could imagine. And then they could sort of portray Ugas as this hard-done-by warrior who deserves another run at the title, right? So they can still develop that narrative. Whereas Ugas Spence or Spence Ugas doesn't quite have the same tone to it, right? The, the same exciting factor to it as, as Spence versus Pacquiao. So... Um, there were people that were worried. Is he going to get the decision? He did. You've got to give credit to the judges. You know, far too often we're worried about the way the the judging will will occur. Um, but yeah, you have to give him a lot of, of credit for the composure he showed under pressure to stick to a tactical game plan that I thought was terrific. Let me know what you think of the fight. How do you think the fight went? Um, yeah, chat to you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.